so the courses in general are really easy mm-hmm. and uh, something that i would like to stress on is that uh, m- most of the courses or in my case at least all of the courses that i chose did not have any exams highly recommended suggestion that i give to each and every person who wants to firstly come to masters mm-hmm. come to germany for a masters degree in uh, computer science or software engineering hello 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 welcome to 14th episode of course review with kamath in today's episode i have with me gautam kamath who pursued his master studies from hochschule heilbronn and he pursued his masters from software engineering domain so in today's episode let us g- hear from gautam himself about his course in detail without any further ado welcome gautam to this session hi how are you doing yeah so first of all thank you so much for having me and yeah i am doing great i hope you are doing well too and i'm really excited for uh, the episode today and to also give some uh, insights into the course and help our uh, the upcoming students who are interested to come to germany as well as you know uh, pursue a career in the field of it software engineering and so on thanks again for joining this uh, podcast so firstly before we get into your course i think it would be apt if you could uh, introduce yourself where do you come from how did you land up in germany did you work for some time before deciding to pursue your master studies and anything about yourself would help yeah so yeah, firstly i come from uh, uh, the coastal uh, part of karnataka and mm-hmm. specifically from mangalore and i pursued my bachelor's degree in computer science and engineering from uh, manipal institute of technology and i passed out in the uh, the year of 2020 and post this i worked for about 2 years as a part of uh, siemens technology and services private limited in mm-hmm. bangalore and then i decided to pursue my masters firstly i was kind of confused and uh, trying to understand the scenario of uh, the uh, masters studies abroad and i went uh, did some research with uh, so the countries firstly i looked at usa the uk and then finally i ended up with germany mm-hmm. as uh, the tuition fee and uh, the practical education was very much suitable for what i was looking for and i also had a few fellow students as well as colleagues who were already pursuing their masters in germany so i had strong recommendations and uh yeah this was what motivated me to finally choose germany as the destination for to pursue my masters degree so did you apply for uh, multiple courses throughout germany or was it only for this course mm-hmm. yeah so firstly i tried for two different intakes and i had shortlisted uh, a few universities so in the first take in the first uh, you know my first try i had shortlisted about five universities mm-hmm. and the courses were similar in the area of either uh, software engineering or something that was more of a practical computer science and unfortunately i couldn't make through in the first uh, try mm-hmm. and in the second try i uh, you know decided to put for many more universities and many mm-hmm. more courses as it was also that i had started my preparation a little earlier which is why i got many more universities open uh, and uh, the deadlines were quite far so in the second in uh, second try i applied to about 10 to 13 universities uh, mm-hmm. in germany and yeah uh, like i said the courses were similar in the area mm-hmm. of uh, software engineering software technology and so on okay so did you get multiple admissions or uh, was it only for, from this course and then mm-hmm. you selected this one yeah so i only received uh, one admit from the public university and mm-hmm. to be on the safer side i had also applied to one of the private universities mm-hmm. named srh heidelberg and finally after getting an admit here uh, in the public university i decided to opt for this as the course also was aligning very much with what i was looking for uh, you know to study further okay so now that it is clear why you chose uh, this particular course from uh, hochschule heilbronn Uh, maybe it's the time to get into the course structure itself mm-hmm. when i see online about this course i see that there are uh, multiple modules m1 m2 m3 and m4 m4 being the thesis semester can you start uh, with this what exactly these four are and how is it structured mm-hmm. yeah so like you rightly said so there are uh, four different uh, things here m1 m2 m3 and m4 
So M1 is what you would like to do uh, and have as a part of your master's degree or uh, certificate, the final one. So this is where your core interest lies. So we have three different specializations that is offered in Oxila Heilbronn for uh, the master's uh, students. So the first one is IT management and the second one is uh, software engineering and data science and the third one is human computer mm -hmm. interaction. So this is what uh, you know, helps you decide what you want to be a part of M1. So M2 is all the subjects that are, uh, you know, remaining, which help you make up the uh, the 60 ECTS. And M3 is something that is fixed and cannot be changed. So it has courses like German, and it also has another course uh, called as scientific writing, which helps you towards the end when you're actually writing a master thesis. And also another additional course, which would help you uh, make up for anything that you would wanted to have studied as a part of your master's, but it is not already present in the master's course. And finally, uh, you know, M4, which is the, the final master thesis, which is one of the most important and the highest weightage uh, uh, throughout your master's program. Perfect. So if I understand it uh, rightly, basically M1 would be something like the profile in which you want to do your majors. And M3 is something that has been already fixed for us where mm -hmm. there is no choice to choose the subjects from and m4 is already a master thesis so you can play around with subjects from m1 and m2 exactly yes okay so now that uh, the structure is clear can you uh, speak a little bit about the three different profiles that you already mentioned maybe speak about the subjects that you studied uh, in the each of these profiles mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So firstly, a point to be noted is that uh, some of the subjects listed in these three profiles are kind of uh, do have some kind of intersection. So say, for example, something like digital transformation is a part of IT management, as well as uh, the software engineering and mm -hmm. data science. So I personally had a goal in mind that I would like to, uh, you know, uh, specialize in uh, software engineering, which is why I decided to take up most of the subjects which are in the domain of software engineering, mm -hmm. engineering and data science. And for this, I chose some of the subjects in uh, software engineering, such as advanced software architecture, and which dealt with things that are happening on the architectural level in the IT world, and intelligent systems, which was dealing with something like what is going on in the world of AI, machine learning, how fast uh, the world is advancing in the area of tech. So this is one of the courses I chose. And algorithmic theory is something that I did not choose because I was not interested to dive deep into the, the area of algorithms. Mm -hmm. And deep learning is not something that I chose because I was kind of not into data science as well. So uh, yeah, there were such courses where I was not interested in, but uh, I stressed mostly on courses like cloud computing, digital transformation, and uh, so on. So these are the courses that were exactly falling in with what I was looking for in terms of my upskilling uh, throughout the master's journey. Cloud computing, say for example, was something that I had never done you know, until I pursued my master, which is what made me fascinated about what is present in this domain. So yeah, I chose subjects like these. And you know, there were also some courses in IT management, uh, which I chose because this was what was making my M2 uh, because these are the courses mm -hmm. that are apart from M1. So I chose a few other subjects like product and quality management, which was dealing with uh, the software quality metrics and so on. And other courses like change and innovation management, digital transformation, again, which is also a part of advanced software engineering. So these techno management subjects also help me upskill in terms of uh, uh, the managerial aspects of uh, digital transformation, technology management, and so on and also gave me some insights into what happens after uh, you know a software is delivered out there and then uh, such uh, topics and the other side of uh, the you know the uh, the profile that you see that is human computer interaction it gives you uh, an insight into what is happening at the interface level between a human and uh, the technology say for example you have something like a microsoft hololens mm -hmm. out there which is released by microsoft and you have you can basically integrate technology into the real world and see things being augmented in the real world. So this is what we call as uh, the interface that has been bridged between uh, the human and the technology. And in this uh, profile, you have a lot of subjects, exciting subjects like 
uh, these which give you uh, you know uh, an uh, overview or insight into the world of uh, augmented reality virtual reality hololens and uh, so on mm -hmm. so overall all these uh, it's a blend of all these courses which make the masters program very exciting and uh, something you will be really fascinated about uh, you know just after you come to germany and start your masters Wow, uh, that's really great to know. I think this is also one of the best insights that uh, I got uh, in this podcast series. Uh, mm -hmm. Since you spoke about a lot of subjects in detail already, is this course really challenging? Uh, is it possible for any everyone who get admit to clear the subjects or how do you rate the difficulty of this course overall now that you have completed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the courses in general are really easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, something that I would like to stress on is that uh, mo most of the courses, or in my case, at least all of the courses that I chose did not have any exams. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is really special about Heilbronn. And uh, the courses are looked in a very practical way, wherein you have almost at least one project throughout the semester for each and every course uh, that you opt for and at least uh, what i had opted for so this was something that made the courses at interesting at the same time uh, really challenging as well because it gives you a lot of insights into the practical aspects of what is happening with the subject mm -hmm. and also uh, make sure that you are kind of working on a project maybe say for example like you're working in a company and you're given a project you have three or four months of time during the during the semester in order to you know work on the project and then submit it on before the deadline. So in general, the courses are really easy and uh, I do not know of any students who have complained about the difficulty level or the complexity of the course. So everybody found it really exciting and fascinating. And I would say being an Indian, something which was really different from what I had studied during my bachelor's course. Yeah. So uh, that means anyone who is also planning to take up this course, do not have to worry about the course overall since uh, there are there are also project type examinations which are slightly more easier to deal with rather than one time examinations exactly yeah and something additionally that i would like to stress mm -hmm. on is, uh, since it's also something on a project level you also have a uh, fellow teammates who you would be working with so you would also have this edge over uh, you know exams where your individual efforts matter the most so in this case, you have your fellow team members whom you can collaborate with, and you also get uh, some insights into leadership management at the same time, where you're kind of managing your own team members and then working on something which is really exciting and very useful as well for your uh, further uh, career and professional growth. This is also something I like with respect to Hochschulas, wherein uh, you can work with the different set of people from different places across the world and you learn a lot during this experience not only technical aspects but also a uh, lot of different uh, managing aspects as well so this is something good at Hochschulers in general yeah. but what i did not know was uh, there is a possibility to choose from multiple subjects uh, at Hochschulers so this is something that is really great in your university and in particularly probably for this course yes exactly Another question that comes to my mind is, uh, did any particular course stand out during your whole term? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So so firstly, uh, there's a technical subject mm -hmm. by name cloud computing. So this was, uh, this I would, uh, this is something, this is a subject that I don't think any university in India, at least on a bachelor's level or master's level, provides, uh, you know, the student with such a depth of what is happening in the, mm -hmm. in this so specifically talking about this course that is cloud computing it gave me an insight into what is happening in the world of aws and things like uh, infrastructure as a code terraform and so on so this is not something that you know uh, ideally a student would be expected to do but this was a very insightful course in, insightful course which i can just vouch for because it has helped me till date you know just even to crack a job and the second course that I would like to talk about is uh, intercultural and diversity management. So it was a very uh, nice course wherein we had an instructor who came all the way from uh, China in order to, uh, you know, help us understand what is happening in Germany on uh, in terms of culture and so on. Because we already are a lot of people 
coming from various countries and so on. And this was a part of the first semester, which meant that a lot of us were not used to how things work out in Germany, how, you know, when you meet up a German and you do not know the culture of a German. And at the same time, the German is also not aware of your culture. So there's a culture gap here. So this course aimed to bridge this gap and make sure that both of us are comfortable with each other and appreciate each other's culture. So this is a course that went for about uh, two or three months long and every session we had something new to talk about. It was also something to do with transparency, which is a part of the German culture, mm -hmm. wherein we had to be transparent and discuss about things that we faced when we just came to Germany and kind of gave us a shock in terms of culture and then this course helped us normalize this feeling of having a culture shock and then further you know uh, plan your journey smoothly in germany appreciating all the cultures or the multicultural environment that is here this is something that is really great that university also takes care of uh, which is not usual in most of the universities at least as far as i know so um Coming to my next question, uh, since you have already spoke a lot about the subjects in detail and touched upon multiple profiles, according to you, who should be choosing this particular course? Uh, to all the students who are watching this video, what is your uh, suggestion? Yeah, so firstly, um, this is a general suggestion that I give to each and everybody who wants to come in general to Germany for a master's, at least in the area of uh, uh, IT or mm -hmm. software engineering or computer science. Uh, so if it would be highly recommended to have at least uh, two years of or two to three years of work experience back in India before you come for the masters. Uh, this is because there are a lot of things that you wouldn't have studied as a part of your bachelor's program and uh, you would be exposed to at the time of your uh, professional uh, career work experience in India. And this would help you a lot in deciding what you would like to study going further. So I believe that this is a very uh, you know strong and highly recommended suggestion that I give to each and every person who wants to firstly come to masters, mm -hmm. come to Germany for a master's degree in uh, computer science of software engineering. And regarding uh, the course itself, so this is very suitable for almost anybody and everybody who wants to specialize in the area of software engineering or data science or IT management or human computer interaction. There are no uh, prerequisites in what you would like, what you would have to already know before taking up this mm -hmm. master's program as such. It is suitable for anybody and everybody. It's interesting as well. And it builds up your profile, you know, one step uh, up above your, uh, you know, past mm -hmm. work experience or any experience that you have in the area of tech. But yeah, this is a small advice uh, that you, it's good if you have some work experience before you come here and you have some things already realized and this would help you during your master's as well as to find a part-time, uh, you know, working student job or something that will further help you get an internship or a thesis opportunity and then in turn help you find a job later in case your, um, you know, aspiration is to study and work further in Germany. Yeah. Um. That's really great to know. I think uh, this is something very important for all the students who want to make up their decision whether to come to Germany and when is the ideal time to come to Germany. Uh, I think this is something really specific to each course. For some courses, you can al always come after your bachelor's directly, but for some, definitely, I think it's worth to get some experience and then come here so that it helps you a long way and you also can as you already mentioned, get to know which profiles do you want to get into rather than coming here and then trying everything out and figuring it out. So I think it helps in decision making. So uh, co coming to my next question, now that you have already landed up with the job, congratulations firstly on that. Um, what kind of job profiles do students uh, get into once they finish this particular course? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the most common uh, profiles that you see people end up is in the area of a software as a software engineer or a software developer or uh, sometimes a DevOps engineer mm -hmm. or sometimes if you have uh, a lot of work experience before you come in for the master's program and you also eventually acquire more work experience mm -hmm. as a part of the master's program, sometimes people also end up in managerial roles like product owner, product managers and so on. 
but the most common ones are uh, for software engineering it's either software engineering engineer or software developer or web developer or a mobile app developer and also i forgot to mention about data science so it would either be a data scientist or mm-hmm. a data analytics data analyst and sometimes like i said if you have uh, a lot of uh, work experience before choosing this masters program you might end up in some senior roles or managerial roles like product owner and scrum master and so on yeah that's really great to hear that there are a lot of possibilities uh, uh, in this particular domain itself um coming to my last question what kind of class composition did you have or were there people from different regions of the world or how how exactly was it yeah so in this course particularly yeah there were a lot of uh, internationally uh, mm-hmm. people so uh, i guess uh, the germans were uh, kind of uh, very less in the course mm-hmm. had a lot of people from india from pakistan a lot of people from asia i would asia. say mm-hmm. just to uh, conclude and yeah we also had some other parts of europe and some germans so it was a very good composition of uh, people coming from various countries and also from different uh, levels of work experience in the past which made uh, you know things like uh, project experience a lot better because you get to learn from a lot of people from various levels of uh, work experience and uh, their professional career so all in all it, it was a great blend of firstly uh, a variety of subjects that you have secondly uh, the diverse country experience and thirdly you know in this you have a lot of levels mm-hmm. of work experience which makes things a lot uh, good and something that i would say would help you grow above and beyond uh, from your career okay that's really nice to know um Thank you Gautam for this wonderful uh, insights into your course which is uh, really rare until unless you find a person who has exactly studied this course I think uh, it was very clear for myself as well uh, coming from a mechanical background uh, you explained it pretty clearly so that I also could understand every bit of it so thanks very much for that I, and I am pretty much sure that students who are uh, interested to join this kind of courses in Germany also have got a good insight So uh, thank you once again for coming on this podcast. Do you have any last uh, closing statements uh, to all the prospective students? Uh yes, so firstly uh, the work that you're doing is really wonderful. So I can just relate because uh, I have a lot of people who approach me on LinkedIn mm-hmm. and they would have they would need some kind of guidance and insights into the course and the university and uh the environment in general in germany so i think such videos are really helpful to such people just to get a starters of what germany and things here look like and yeah secondly through this platform i would also like to you know let the audience know that in case you have any other questions queries i'm always feel free to reach out to me on via linkedin so i would be really happy to help and then you know plan your journey ahead so that's really great of you to uh, let know the audience that you are ready to help uh, in case they need something so with this uh, i would end this session here uh, to all the viewers if you like this session if you like the videos on this platform kindly like share and subscribe with all the students who are also looking for similar content help everyone and hopefully we see you all soon in germany so with this uh, thank you See you until next time bye bye